Hello my friends, my name is Ryan Freeman and you are watching another book review, another D.H. Lawrence novel. He is my favorite English author and today I'm bringing to you Aaron's Rod. This was published in 1922 and if you go online and type in Aaron's Rod reviews, you will find a lot of hate for this novel by one of the greatest my favorite, but also considered one of the greatest English authors of the 20th century. So why so much hate? There are some inconsistencies, perhaps some superficial flaws within its pages that you can point to. I, I can't disagree with that. I'm not an expert literary critic. I am a person who's very honest about what he reads. And in this novel, Aaron's Rod, there are gems of psychological perspicacity. Probably if you like D.H. Lawrence, you have a deep appreciation for the complexities of human relationships, love, the dissolution of romance, romance, what initiates romance, the various kinds of romance that are uh, possible. That sounded a little abstract. Let me see if I can break that down. So, I'm going to give you a spoiler. I'm going to tell you what the story is about. Not that um, you wouldn't get that just from reading the back of the book. But it's basically about a man who is in his 30s. He's married. He's got two daughters. And it's the opening scene. It's Christmas. And you would ideally, this is the perfect moment in a man's life where he's got his wife who's doing some needlework. He's got his two daughters that are decorating a Christmas tree. They love their daddy. Well, they need their daddy. And he's not happy. He goes out for a drink. And he never returns. And he goes, and he doesn't know why he's left. He knows that he has confused emotions within him. He knows that returning home, although it's the thing his wife expects him to do, it's the thing his children expect him to do, it's the thing that his society expects him to do, something inside him, he can't put his finger on it, on it, he can't put it into words, but he knows he must not return, and he just drifts and wanders. And the novel is basically about that. It's a man who runs away from his family, he is still semi-responsible by sending money to his wife. He sets something up. Uh, but it's really about a man who abandons his family. And he doesn't know why. And he doesn't know where he's going. But along this sort of journey, he is following whatever desires, whatever passions, whatever whatever inklings he's getting within himself, whatever intuitions that he has, and he's meeting people. Some people are disgusted by his situation. They cannot agree with him. Some people are fascinated by him. He's, he's meets, uh, for lack of a better word, a guru named Lily, who helps to, who at first he has a little conflict with, but Lily has something in him that he that he wants, that he needs, some self-assurance that goes beyond the normalcies and the standards and the conventions that normally guide most of our lives. And he ends up traveling around England, traveling around Europe, going to Italy, meeting a cast of characters. It's fantastic uh, in just the descriptions of Italy alone. Uh, the, the cast of characters all come to life. Some of it is very satirical. Some of it, uh, perhaps even caricatures of what an Italian person is like, what an English person is like. Um, but all funny and well done. Uh, perhaps you, you, if you're a very idealistic person um, who, who thinks things should be this way and no other way, um, then you might find this novel a little cynical because... D.H. Lawrence's opinion on love and marriage um, are very nuanced. And uh, what a woman is, what a man is, the power and the submission, the power game that can 
happen inside a marriage. So Aaron, along his journey, starts to starts to realize why he what was the problem at the core of his marriage with I believe her name was Lottie. What was the issue? And it was just this. Although there was love, and perhaps even more love in the beginning and less love than when he left her, there was this, this conflict, like a battle of who would dominate, who would get the other person's soul. And you might say, that's a little dramatic, but I mean, I don't know what your marriage is like, and I don't know what your friend's marriages are like, but if you talk to some people who have been through some things with their wives or their husbands, and it's sometimes it's not big actions. It's not like he cheated on me or she burned my car down or anything like that, although that happens. Sometimes it's these little, I think Lawrence describes it or the main character, Aaron, describes it as little electrical shocks that happen. Just these little minute tensions. A battling of wills. To use a metaphor, if I'm traveling with my friend and I want to go this way and see this, and he wants to go that way and see that, unless we can compromise and two wills sort of go, you know, in harmony, there could be a little battle. And if one person gets their way and the other person feels defeated, unless they completely submit, they're going to be unhappy. So ultimately, Aaron leaves his wife, Lottie, because, I mean, there's a lot more detail in here, but, you know, she was trying to claim his soul and his soul didn't want to be claimed. And it goes into how most marriages today, and it talks about sort of the degradation of men. Men used to be... Men used to be the one in power, but now women are in power. And you might be saying, no, that's bullshit. The patriarchy is still number one. Well, you know, if you look at a lot of marriages, the woman generally has a lot of power, especially after they have kids. After they have kids, their feelings can change quite a lot um, because the mother with her children are our holiest, holiest... Um, or most sacred uh, institution. And um, I know a lot of people who had a great marriage, and then after their wife had a couple kids, their marriage sucked. Now, some people, it's not that way. Not I, I'm not trying to say that marriage, I'm not, I'm not trying to be cynical about marriage, okay? So I'm trying to explain how uh, D.H. Lawrence's story is somewhat realistic. Um, but a lot of marriages do break down and, re and the relationship does change after having children. And the wife, not in all cases, but in many cases, does often wield more power over her husband than vice versa. Um, and many men are domesticated. They submit to their wives if they can just please their wives. I think even our society reinforces that. You know, you watch a lot of sitcoms and it's always... Well, if your wife's angry, go apologize. Just say you're wrong. There's no sort of like inner truth, like really trying to work it out. Um, and then in in this novel, Aaron's Rod, they talk about this, Aaron with some of other characters, about how, um, how, yeah, in most cases in the modern world, and I think that in the modern world, which was 100 years ago when this novel was published, this was published in 1922, I think it's still applicable today, perhaps even to a greater extent. Um, but there are some men who cannot submit, men with too much spunk. So it goes into sort of the, the deep philosophical um, ideas of life force and vigor and maleness. Um, and, and some men just can't. Uh, and Aaron is one of those. He doesn't try to crush Lottie or control her. He just leaves and says, Adu, even though society and many people will hate him. He makes his living with a flute, but he's not rich and he doesn't have constant gigs. And he comes across people who do show a little charity towards him. 
um, because he's charming. It, it talks a lot about the differences of how um, how it is to have money in this world and not have money in this world. How it is to have charm in this world and not have charm in this world. How most of us will bow down to someone who has a lot of money, even though actually objectively if we just look at their nature they're not really aristocrats naturally but they have money which makes them aristocrats some people who don't have money but have a special gift a special wisdom or a special charm uh we don't bow down to them because they don't have money they don't have status but they're able to get their way and they're able to get into these very interesting scenes and experiences and behind closed doors that they wouldn't normally be able to do unless they had those natural naturally endowed qualities um i don't know if if i probably scared you off but i bet if you're watching this you like psychology and you're not a scared you're not scared of a novel that might be somewhat politically incorrect um from today's standards but is very honest and that's why i like D.H. Lawrence, this guy here, because he doesn't pull punches. He doesn't pull punches. I should say, though, uh, many of the characters in this novel are satirized versions of people who were in D.H. Lawrence's life and probably would be even more enjoyable if, if you were reading it at that time and you knew who those characters were. But even without any of that knowledge, I highly recommend that you pick it up. It is much shorter than a lot of Lawrence's other big classics like The Rainbow or Women in Love or Sons and Lovers. Um, I have loved it. I got a lot uh, more I, a lot more insight into Lawrence's psychology and philosophy from reading this. Uh, and so I, I'm very happy that I picked it up and I hope that you liked it. If you have any questions or comments, put it down below. Um, I'm not sure if I explained it all correctly, but uh, I love this novel and I hope you find the time to pick it up. Have a great one.